Hi all, how are you doing? I hope well. Was God good? I'm sorry about my voice, but I'm sick. So bear with me. And uh, I have to drink a lot of water, but still I'm happy to be here today. Um, because Not just because I think Ruby Day is getting, is a great conference and is getting better year after year. So thank you to the organizers. But also because I used to live here in Florence for one year, and this is where I learned Ruby by night while doing a, jo a day job and learning Ruby by night. So I'm happy to get back to the roots and share with the rest of the community the progress so far. Specifically today, I want to talk about Hanami. If you don't know what Hanami is, let me Google it for you. <laughs> Starts for the basic. It's a full stack web server. If you never tried it, you should check it out. Uh, on tomorrow, the, I will give a workshop in the, in the morning. If you are interested, sign up. We just released a 0.9 version with a lot of improvements on the model domain part, which is now power, powered by ROM, maintained by Piotr Solnica. Um, and I worked at the on uh, Hanami for almost four years. My name is Luca Guidi, Jodosh on Twitter. I work at Vienna Simple from Rome, and uh, these are the lessons learned while building Hanami and my takeaways from open source so far. It's not just Hanami, but my experiences so far in uh, open source. It's not boring as it may sound. First of all, this is a code-free presentation. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> We will learn about how old is the universe, uh, psychology theories, uh, economic theories, uh, the teachings of a British admiral, plus other silly and useless facts. If you stay with me until the end of this talk, I promise we will watch together this video, these cute kittens. But until then, until then, let's talk about the vision. Okay, you know, open source, most of you I have um, good, you know, uh, members of open source in this room, thank you for being here. Uh, most of people outside of open source think it's made by a bunch of smart people discussing all day long together about design patterns and they do pair programming all day long. And while you, they are at, the, at their workstation, you imagine them like hackers doing a really obscure thing but still powerful things. But in reality, how open source is, it's more a, a lonely job. Right, it's more trying to make the CI to pass for JRuby at 3 a.m. Well, you know, desperately in tra train that. Um, for me, it's something that goes from I'm a genius, and a second later I pick at the wrong career. With well, all the emotions they are in the in the middle, right? I, I don't know how many of you are in, actually involved with open source. Please raise your hands. Oh, that's that's great. For those who never tried, you should do. It's a rewarding experience. For those who did, please stop you to make your life miserable and do something better with it. I, I'm, jo <laughs> I'm joking, of course. It's, um, for me, it's magic. It's, um, I have a vision, work really hard on it, and it turns into something real that people can benefit from. It's more like you know, art. Uh, you have an idea of a painting, and you do it. I hope better than this, but even if it's you still produce a masterpiece like Mona Lisa, which is the most popular painting ever. It is 513 years old as we speak today, and it had a huge impact on art. It's still nothing if compared with uh, all, the, uh, all the things that humanity produced. And in our day-to-day -to -day lives, we don't even notice about how beautiful is this painting and the impact that it made, and especially on the big picture of the universe. Do you know how old is the universe? Come on. Sorry? 14 billion of years. You're welcome again. So. Let me check this slide here. So if you look things in this perspective, uh, probably your impact in open source would be less important than Mona Lisa, right? So the first lessons, the lesson that I learned is to be a humble. Don't be attached to the code. The less pride you put in your project, the better you can lead it. For instance, if a new contribution comes in, you have no problem to accept that somebody else did a better job, okay? If the code is good, fits the vision, uh, the tests are passing, we hope you merge it, and that is for the good 
uh, of the project is for the good of the, co um, the community. If you have a good governance, if your ego is it's outside of the equation. And even better, don't be attached to the project itself. Because in a fast-paced world like technology, things can soon update it. Think of, for instance, CPUs. We had a new generation of CPUs each two years, which is remarkable. And that way technology works. Of course, there are exceptions to these rules. There are you know, long uh, and uh, really old projects that still are kicking. Think of Cobalt that just got a web, micro web framework. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. <laughs> it's a real project on, uh, on GitHub. It's like web programming in 1959 or something. It probably was made by someone that, that still <laughs> cares about <laughs> Cobalt. In psychology, it's called the omnipotence of thought, which is a, a theory developed by Sigmund Freud. Um, when we are kids, our thinking is made of omnipotent thoughts. We think we are perfect, we think we are superheroes, we really think that we can fly, right? We really believe that. But as we grow up, we replace that way of thinking with something more realistic, we hope. <laughs> And so how that this applies to open source? First of all, don't think that your project will stay forever. Again, fast paced world where things can be soon um, obsolete. And when, when that will happen, you have to embrace the reality that the open source works like that, technology works like that, so it doesn't hurt the narcissistic aspect of your personality. And don't think your project is perfect because perfection doesn't exist. A project, it's you know, try to solve just a narrow set of problems, leaving behind the rest of them, right? It's made by a design, which is made by compromises, and compromises, we know, they are not perfect. So, what you should aim to build is a habit-changing software. What that means, Hanami may look, for those who tried it, may look a little bit weird, but this is on purpose. I want to make you to change your habit while building web apps with Hanami on purpose. Not just think about productivity, but the other aspects of the code that are often left behind, uh, such as separation of concerns, instability, and so on. So if it looks weird, it's just a matter of habit or, rapid, or wrapping your head around the principles, the founding principles. So it's a, a way to change your, your habit. Think of one historical example, subversion versus Git. Why Git won the battle with the, over subversion? Of course, this is one of the reasons, reason, emoji reactions of GitHub, but there is more, I think. Uh, why? Because if you remember, back in the days, using subversion, it was hard to merge a branch. It was impossible to work offline. So using Git today means to have a life easier. And we developed the habits of working offline, for instance. So if Git would get outdated in 10 years, for instance, the, a new generation of source control management software cannot ignore the habit that it formed in our life. And that where Gain won. Think of smartphones, for instance, uh, iPhone, Android, whatever. It doesn't matter. What it matters, it they change it basically our lives. <laughs> so the bottom line here: don't be attached to the code. Because if it isn't personal, nobody can hurt you. Uh, you know, when you post something about a new release, uh, people can, can comment uh, harsh things. And that can ruin your day. And uh, the problem with the internet in general is that out of 10 people, the nine of them are silent. They appreciate your software or they may ignore you. But they don't are uh, negative in that way. Then the other person can be impressed in your, in your head for a day or for a, for a weekend. My advice here is to not try to change the interwebs, but to get your uh, uh, skin thick and deal with it, basically. But still, for me, it's hard to separate my open source persona from the human being that I am. It's, I am having hard times to follow my own advices here. Because one of the reasons why 
I mean, open source is to demonstrate that I can do something useful for you, what I think it's useful for you. But why I think that, and where the inspiration comes from, it's one of the most recurring questions that I, that I get. And the, resp the answer is both uh, surprising and simple. There is no inspiration, okay? And there is no spoon, by the way. This is out of context, but I want you to make, to make you laugh today. There's no inspiration. If you work for a bank, for instance, a good knowledge of how a bank works it helps you to write good software. I've been a web developer for my entire career. I knew exactly the pain points that I, I uh, experienced during my day-to-day my -day -day job, and I wanted to address them with a solution that I think it could work, okay? So my advice here is don't start a project to be a starter. Do, but to be a maintainer. What that means, start something by considering to stay around for the next 10 years. And that will only happen if you're really interested in the field that you pick it for, for your project. You have to know it really well, so inspiration is out of the equation here. You will have the clear picture in your mind. And you see, at the beginning, Hanami wasn't so time consuming as it is now. It, Sometimes if you ha want to scratch your own itch, that has to be a full-time job. It can be something that takes you, you know, something like uh, one hour per day, like in my case. I started with just one hour per day because I wanted to validate that the proof of concept of Hanami was, was working. So I made, you know, I'm a big fan of small improvements day by day. It's like watching a Game of Thrones episode each day, but instead I did made progress while the characters didn't. Okay, okay, there are, you know, seven episodes where this happens and we go at that, right? <laughs> so, the entire six seasons of uh, Game of Thrones aired until now are long, <laughs> I know because I counted it, uh, 3,350 3, minutes, which is 15, five hours, which is the, the time that it took me to release the first two versions of Hanami Router and Hanami uh, Controller, or the time that it will take you to walk from here to my place in Rome in case you want to visit. And uh, so, so the next time that you think you don't have time, just reconsider it. Sometimes it's just a matter of turn off Netflix and do something useful if you want to, of course. So make progress every day, but not exactly every day. This is my GitHub graph contribution for, for updated to November. Can you spot a pattern here? Yes, yes. I don't work on weekends. I think that uh, GitHub streaks are something that uh, nobody wants to sit in front of a computer every single day. I respect if you do that, but uh, this is something that doesn't work for me. Have a life. Learn to cook, play with your dog, go for a movie, go for a walk, read a book. This is something that you want to do to don't burn out just after six months. And remember, life is too short to help strangers over the internet. Because, you know. <laughs> so make sure it's worth it and don't burn, uh, burn out, don't disappear after six months, because that happens. And in general, I found really hard to justify open source time. It's really hard to tell your supervisor you want to invest in open source, right? It's really hard to tell your significant other that you are going to spend one hour more at work, right? But why? Because a free open source software is an unpaid job. We do because we love it, but we struggle to pay the bills. It's very likely that your Ruby shop's entire shop entirely run, is run on, entirely on the free open source software. Think of the Linux, think of uh, uh, the database that we use, the Ruby itself, the frameworks, the libraries that we use. And we just take it for granted. In economy, it's called the tragedy of commons, which is a, a 
theory developed in the last century. It's described like a situation of shared resources, like our community, our infrastructure, where all the single actors are acting via, um, according to their self-owned interests. So the thing is that people just take from open source, but just a few give back, okay? Let me check this. So, so the thing is that without a sustainable model, open source is a privilege. I've been funding myself with my own savings the time working on Hanami, but this is no longer possible because as you probably know, it's hard to monetize open source. Right, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, there are good initiatives like Ruby Together that um, have just one scope, crowdfunding to pay developers time and infrastructure costs for Bundler and RubyGems.org, which are resources that we all in this room, I think, will, de will depend on. But this is not enough. This is, we need more money, we need marketing, financial, and legal advice. Speaking of which, I discovered this. I don't know how many of you know that Hanami at the beginning was named Lotus, which is, unfortunately, um, popular IBM office suite, suite, I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, at the beginning I said, hey, I, I don't mind. I mean, pe developers are smart people, they can tell the difference between the two software. One is, again, an office suite, mine is a web framework. They can tell the difference, right? Right? You are smart, right? But I proven to be wrong. It's like starting a, you know, a techno music project and name it The Queen. Okay, sooner or later, people will imagine this rather than you sitting behind a console. So, back in January, uh, an IBM employee opened an um, issue on our GitHub tracker expressing all his concerns and confusion about the name clashing. So, that, f that um, had become eventually a flame and I had to seek for legal advice. And the, the outcome of that conversation with this lawyer was mind-blowing for me. First of all, I didn't know that um, trademarks are held by industry basis. So you can start something name and name it Lotus, but it has to be outside of the um, software, software industry. And you cannot slightly change the name, like some people suggested. You cannot still not call it Lotus.rb because people, remember, will still think about this, okay? And even if you never get sued by IBM, you are still growing your branding in the shadow or their, of their uh, huge and more important name. So pick something original. The problem is that if you made a search on, on uh, GitHub, there are more than... 900 the projects named Lotus, Lotus something. They are all potential look for trouble, okay? With, with IBM, the same exact trouble that I went through. So the next time you want to start a project, do yourself a favor. Check these two websites. The first one is uh, explains how trademark works and the second one is a free software foundation website maintained by their lawyers. They are uh, they can explain better about uh, better than I did about trademarks and how they work, and they give you advices on uh, what to do and what, especially what not to do. And of course, if you are out of names, you can still web 2.0 name generators and pick something like Pixelu or Viki Noodle or Skybo, which are horrible names, and probably nobody registered it. Oh. I don't remember this, this, uh, this thing, let's discuss after. So, um, this is the most important uh, section of the talk. First of all, without people, attack is dead. It's a fact. Uh, I call it Schrodinger. I can reprint it right now because of my, it's like Schrodinger code. You know the paradox of the cats that a cat can be uh, simultaneously alive or dead inside the box. The same thing is true for, for a software. It can be both uh, working and useful until and um, simultaneous, simultaneously uh, broken and useless until people don't use it. Okay, so people are the key component, and to attract people, you have to build 
a welcoming community. Everyone, first, this is the pillar. Everyone should be, should feel safe. And it's up to you, it's up to me in this case, to stand up for their, their safety. I don't know how many of you have kids, okay? If you yell at your kid while she's learning something, hey, what, what the hell are you doing? Are you stupid or what? What happens? The, your daughter just frees up and cannot express her potential. The same thing is true with the uh, open communities. If there are, the tone is aggressive, especially junior developer can freeze out and disappear. So my advice is adopt a code of conduct which is a clear statement that you are proactively making people safe and welcome in your community. And use soft skills. Take the chance to say thank you every time you receive a pull request, you receive a, a, you know, a compliment or an objection, whatever it is. That means people took the time you know, to check out your project and be helpful. So be grateful for that. Because if I ask you to help me with my DNS simple day job, you would say no, and that is expected, right? But if I ask you to help me with Anami, it's a noble, a noble project, so you are more willing to help me, okay? And let's keep this noble. To do that, you have to communicate a lot with people, okay? It's more too much tempting to sit in front of a computer and, you know, produce code. But the less time you spend away from your computer, the better is for the, uh, the community uh, because you are actually checking with them if they are happy with your project, you, if it's useful or not. Be sure that your concept is simple enough to get across because remember there always will be a margin of people that don't understand what you are saying. Not because they are stupid, I'm far away from tell that and this, but because we often take for granted the level of knowledge that um, of the reader, of the people that you are communicating with. There are people that may not understand well the English language, casual rubies, they are interested in other languages like Python or Go, whatever, and they want to check your, your project. Or again, junior developers. This is our getting started guide. It drives you to the old steps to create a Hanami project, and you can literally copy and paste those, those snippets of code and make your project to, to work. Well, it um, drives you to create this project using Postgres. What happens when you start the server and Postgres is not up? Of course, the application crashes, but there is an error message for that. For me, that I'm an experienced developer, I read the message, oh, okay, I have to start Postgres, of course. And this may look obvious for most of you, but it turned out last week one guy turned up in chat and said, hey, this is broken, and passed the, the error message. Now, it turns out that junior developers don't read too much the error messages. So my, uh, my goal here for next week is to rewrite this guide to use SQLite because there is no server to start. I, I assume it was simple enough, but my, my level of uh, experience in the programming prevented me to see this problem. So I wanted to reduce the margin of people that don't get the, uh, what's going on. Remember, newcomers are afraid to make mistakes. Make them to feel safe. Tell expressly, tell them that if something is broken, it's not necessarily them, and make sure to keep them in touch with a real human. So in this guide, in everything, you are in um, Hanami documentation or whatever, you are just one click away from the chat where there is always people willing to help each other. And that gets back to the welcoming community. It's up to me and the other people to set the tone and uh, make sure that people are helpful to each other. That drives you us to another topic. First, impressions matter. Okay, uh, there is, I'll give you one example. There is this guy that last month tweeted, um, hey, I don't know what uh, language and framework to use for my next project. 
look the amount of the responses that he got. It's impressive. People suggested uh, Ruby, Rack, Rails, Sinatra, Hanami, Trailblazer, uh, Go, Go with Martini, Elixir, Phoenix. Look, it's endless scrolling, basically, right? And all these replies are potential competitors of Hanami, OK? It's endless, I told you. We are fighting for developers' attention. There are so much good open source projects nowadays that you, there are probably somebody out, somebody out there that needs an, needs exactly an AMI, but because of all how internet is is wide, they cannot, you know, reach me, or maybe they don't have the time. So you are fighting for their attention, and the first impression has to be, you want to make sure that just a, a one glance, people can understand what is this about. They have to remember your name. You want to, with the first impression, you want to set the tone and uh, how the personality of the framework is, the logo and, um, and uh, the motto. Look at the old Emacs. Homepage. This is from 1998. It discourages you to understand what it is about. You know, it's a problem with this part of an open source. But they re uh, recently redesigned it with, you know, what is about the main features, screencasts, the release notes, which is much better. It's not about, uh, you know, aesthetic or a visual uh, pleasure, but also because you want to give another another tone you want to uh, communicate that an um, sorry emacs is still a modern tool that can be used as of today and if people go through all this noise of going of uh, knowing you and eventually get interested make sure that the first contribution is uh, is um, easy to do that means uh, uh, make sure that your readme has all the exact steps to clone the repository locally and start the test. The more burden there is for them to do that, the very likely they abandon the intention of contribute because if it's hard to set up, they may give up in, in five minutes. There was a British admiral in the uh, two centuries ago from the Royal Navy that during between battles, he used to work with a bunch of acorns in his pocket, because he want he used it to went to the woods and plant seed those acorns because he wanted to make sure that the Royal Navy one day will never be out of trees. That is the same thing that you should do. You should make sure that people you are planting seed every day because you want to make sure that your community day by day it's more it gets more uh, bigger, but not for the sake of it, of course, but because you want to include those people in the in a, uh, open discussion and open um, uh, open source. So, one last thing about people is that leadership comes from respect, not entitlement. This is something that I learned recently. There are people contributing to Anami here in this room that may uh, agree, but I've, I've not, this is a mistake that I, that I made. Basically, I've, uh, uh, I think that if you um, give some, some power to some people, people, they don't respect them just because you give them the power to, basically, you, you granted them commit access, but because they are competent. So my advice here is to not uh, impose the authority, but give the right voice to the people that deserve it. And this is the last part. This, I promise it, code free. Okay? This is just the only code that the, you see and is a, a screenshot. It has a long journey. It, I learned a lot of things with uh, building while well, building Anami because it, it goes from database to the assets to the um, all the things that uh, uh, that concern the HTTP and and so on. So um, it helped me to write better code in my day jobs. Day job, it's one right now. 
but the thing is that Ruby, it's uh, easy and simple. We have you know, uh, heard about stories of people coming to Ruby as their first programming language, but still there are too much things that we don't care about. For instance, if we share, uh, we share uh, certain objects and they can get manipulated by, by the, the second object, the surprise, the surprise, sorry, the outcome may be surprising. So the advice here is to test everything, even stupid corner cases, okay? Because the more tests you write with components that may be you know, not, uh, how to say, in a relation between them, it's where the bug relies. So write, of course, unit tests, but also a lot of integration tests. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. And if you think that uh, writing uh, writing uh, a Ruby a Ruby project means to write, you know, mainly Ruby, it's you are wrong. Markdown would be your primary language because of the documentation. Always uh, make sure that the guides are part of the release. Don't do the mistake that release one month later because if the day of the announcement somebody finally wants to check Hanami, the guides are broken and I lose them. I, it's not optimized for first impression and first contribution. So there are a lot of places where you are, you are um, um, force it. I, I encourage you to write API docs to, uh, to let people to understand what's going on there and because uh, the chat, GitHub and so on support Markdown, that will be your primary source of communication. Again, communication is key. And one last thing, just one last thing, a principle that is often not used too much, is type safety and data integrity. I'll give you one example. We have the input, the project in the database, we receive the input, we perform some validations, and we store the data into the database, right? This is basic stuff. What happens if we introduce a validation later on, okay? It happens that we have no data integrity into the database because we added to the code and we expected that our production code behaves the same. So what happens when I load the data it's passed to several places on the application and it may break in unexpected, unexpected ways, in expected points of the code. Once you get back at work, do, your, do myself a favor and then tell me if it's true or not. Open your exception tracker and check the most common exceptions that uh, your application raises. It's most of the time no method error because you expect a value, instead it's nil. You expect a string, instead it's a hash. So have a strong level of validation. It's really, really important because we tend to forget that not just the input is a boundary to your, to your project, but also the database is a, is a boundary. And you want to make sure that what happens here is uh, all the um, calculations that you do are made on same data, uh, on um, yeah, valid data. So a new approach that we are taking an Hanami to is to make to blow here. So you are sure that it doesn't affect the application, the project here, but it blows up. It, it's a fail fast, uh, a fail fast uh, uh, strategy. And again have a strong validation of your inputs. So again, it has been a great journey. I learned a lot of things that I want to share today. I just tried to summarize the last four years. Again, this was a great journey, but you know what is more great than this? Cats. I promised it, and you, you got it. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay, okay.
so thank you. I don't know if there is time for uh, questions. Five minutes. Yes, thank you. Uh, the question is, <laughs> there is a subject for another topic. If there is something that would uh, have been done differently in the past. One is to avoid the global state. It's not a rhetoric here, but I had uh, hard times to, um, to build things because we are used to that kind of thing, to have globals everywhere in our, in our uh, projects, application, whatever you want to call. But it was a mess for the internals of the, uh, of the project to be, to be maintained and to be tested. We have brittle uh, CI builds on Hanami itself because if you change, for instance, there were the, there are some tests that are Mm, fiddling with the, the env, um, you know, the env uh, uh, constant that you you got, which represents the the payload of uh, uh, environment variables. It was you know setting the values, uh, asserting, resetting, and that fiddling with that global state was uh, was a pain because uh, we had uh, you know out of five builds one it was broken or even uh, even more often so that would be a thing that i'm going to slowly to to replace okay okay let me let me ask first uh, another question xavier are you interested <laughs> <laughs> i'm joking Okay, okay. We have to ask you know, yeah. somebody else. But uh, probably it's too different. It's too different. And at the point that Rails proven to be a really successful platform, uh, they found a really successful recipe. And people are used to. I have, uh, you know, mixed sentiment, um, you know, emotions over there. Not emotions, but opinions over there. They are successful in the way, in the format that they found. It's not probably gonna, gonna happen if they, David, for instance, will ask me to do, to do that. Because uh, I, I also believe in diversity, technological diversity. So, and we are taking a really different path. For instance, uh, other things that are in my mind that I want to discuss with, uh, with the rest of the community if they make sense to them, but it's diverging too much from uh, where uh, Hanami, I want to, Hanami to be in the future. Oh, um, how I deal with trolling. I told you it's hard for me. But uh, I believe to explain things to people at the beginning, if they are trolling or uh, rejecting my opinions or a release or something, then if they go to their path, and uh, I don't believe it's it's uh, you know something that can um, where we can benefit actually, I just give up and and move on. Again, it's uh, it's something that you do for your own health. Okay. Comments? Uh, yes, because I cannot resist to read comments. Okay, let me say the. Uh, <laughs> he Nick asked if I read comments on Reddit. I'm a fan of not reading the comments, but sometimes I'm so tempted to do, because even uh, people trolling. If you only find people that are trolling you. And nobody says, okay, um, uh, this is going to be helpful. You have to ask yourself something. So it's, you know, even in trolls, you can learn something. Okay, so you mean how is the average of uh, contributors? How many people are there? Or uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, the question is uh, how I deal with uh, basically the development of the feature and how this involves the community. Right, um, I have to say because this is not full time for me, and uh, I struggle to. It's really hard to. Um, if you don't plan in advance, it's really hard to have uh, uh, to manage free time of developers because it may happen that tomorrow somebody, after this conference, somebody has say, "Hey, I watched your talk. I'm interested. How can I contribute?" And sometimes my answer was. Of course, there is plenty of work, but it's not planned yet. So the thing is to 
to start in advance to think about the, the, the pipeline or things that you want to see developed in three months, six months, whatever. But still, it's hard to do that. So most of the time, it was a, a kind of a lucky combination of me having time, with other people having time. Uh, and also because I have to be personally involved with or there are other people that are uh, helping each other to tell, hey, this works like this. If you want to write this feature, have a look at there and there and there. But it's really hard because you are kind of CTO slash CEO of a, a project would be without being you know fully involved because of time constraints. Okay, what I'm, do, I'm trying to do for starting for next next week is to talk with uh, all the collaborators and I want to set up teams. One of the most important would be the ecosystem team. That means make sure that Hanami has extension points to communicate with other Ruby libraries and to produce examples of how to, for instance, integrate with a fabrication, database cleaner, Capybara is already integ integrated, but all this kind of stuff. And people that are actually using it. Uh, I'm starting to talk with people that are already using it in production and try to understand what are their needs if I change something, if they affect the existing code and look towards stability. Again, we are 0 0.9. I'm going to fix bugs, going to release a 1.0 beta. I don't know, one soonish, more or less, and then value stability of other, other things, OK? Well, thank you all.